Hi, I'm Tim Gladner. Welcome to Capital Views. And welcome today, Representative Kathy Tilton from Palmer. Kathy is now the House Minority Leader, and she's a longtime legislator from the uh, Matsu region. So welcome, Kathy. Thank you, Tim. It's great to be here. I uh, appreciate your inviting me on. K Kathy, tell us a little bit about your own uh, career in, you know, before coming to the legislature, what 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 sort of work you've done and, and uh, things you've been involved in. Sure, absolutely. First, I'm going to say I'm from between Palmer and Wasilla, just to make sure my Matsu friends hear that. But, um, you know, previous to um, becoming um, a legislator, I actually did legislative staff for a few years, four years before I ran for office, which I think is um, especially uh, good training for somebody who's looking at maybe moving on. Um, that wasn't my idea when I first uh, started staffing. I didn't know I would go any further, but I have to tell you that the relationship building and the process that I learned from staffing was very beneficial. Previous to that, um, I have a family that's fairly entrepreneurial and we have, um, for uh, the main business that I'm involved in is has to do with I would call it a real estate investment type of a background. We um, have done everything from develop uh, large subdivisions to provide housing in um, all different um, areas of housing and, and different uh, cost uh, levels. And then we have also dealt with um, some of the banking side of the real estate market and dealing with mar mortgages and notes and buying those uh, paper in the secondary market. So that's kind of basically what we do in our investment life. So, and um, if you want to go back any further than that, if I also spent um, about 10 years working for the city of Wasilla, where I was the administrative assistant for about five different mayors. My goodness, well, you've seen it all in Wasilla then. <laughs> yeah, I uh, like to grow up, actually. <laughs> yeah, uh, Representative Tilton, what, you know, housing in Matsu is an interesting topic. It's, it's, it's one of the more affordable places to live and it's also um an area that we've seen the fastest population growth is, mm -hmm. is 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 the region still growing and is housing able to keep up with it you know the region is still growing we still are getting an influx of people moving into the area uh, the housing market is keeping I, I think that it is keeping up with it um my son's involved in um, housing inspections so he's involved with all of the builders out in the in the valley area and um you know i think they keep very very busy but it is um it is definitely um something where it may have slowed down just a little tiny bit but it is still on the move um, and it just kind of depends on what is it that you're looking for you know there's different levels of housing there's some affordable housing there's maybe some um you know um ranch style single family homes and then you can go up into the you know the little bit higher um price ranged homes but we have a great mix of those and some wonderful new subdivisions that are happening and i have to tell you that our people in the construction field and the building field are are happy as all get out honestly <laughs> It's amazing that the Valley has done so well economically all through the recession. Um, I, I heard a presentation by Neil Freed where he talked about the, you know, the Matsu was the one region of the state that kept growing all through the recession. And that's probably reflected in the housing values. I think a lot of it has to do that with that. And I think there was um, a lot of, um, you know, we had a lot of uh, discourse and discussion with uh, different types of mandates in different areas. And I will say that the Matsu was one of the areas that did remain open for the majority of the time with little mandate happening at all. And I, and um, that mixed with our, um, you know, our property tax rates and, and that kind of thing, it really is attractive. Um, also, um, just adding to the fact that there is, um, you know, a lot of school choice in the area. So I think it is a, an attractive area for people to want to uh, come and move their families to. Is is the is the uh, the the school district able to keep up with with the population growth? The children, additional children. Do you, are you going to need new schools pretty soon? 
you know, I think that that, you know, that would have been a possibility if we weren't working in this kind of world of choice where we have a lot of different options with uh, charter schools and with homeschooling and with online schooling. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say that we're going to need to build a brick and mortar school. Our school district is doing a fabulous job with providing the service for um, those who are in need of that service. And um, I will say that there is a very large homeschooling uh, base that is resides in the valley and so I think that I don't I don't see that you know that we'll need to build a brick and mortar type of uh, school um, you know in the too near future well of course right now people are very focused in in the borough and school district people very focused on getting the Houston middle school uh, yes place and build and uh, in terms of the um you've had quite an experience this earlier this this uh, spring with the storm out there i it, it must have been an amazing thing to go through were you there during the storm i absolutely was there and, and you're right amazing is an interesting word for it i was one of the fortunate people whose power was only out for about 12 hours so i felt very blessed because people on either side of me had power out for five days or or longer i think one of the most amazing things that came out of the storm in my um, observation was that community helping community which is what it really is about um you know we had a we had a tree that was blocking the ingress and egress of our of our subdivision where i live and um, um a group of community members got together and they went out and they you know they used their saws and their uh, tractors and they just got the tree out of the way instead of waiting on somebody to come and help them you know waiting for a government service the community just pitched in and helped each other and, and they were all you know we were all looking out for each other and what the needs were and i really feel like that is what you know what we are called to be is neighbors to each other and it was really heartwarming to see that happen not to mention the great kudos that went out to our you know our linemen who were out in the weather you know up high in the trees dealing with the winds blowing the the rain and the snow and they were doing their very best to get our uh, power back on to us and the, the third thing that was great was there was a lot of information coming from the borough and coming from the utility companies and we were able to kind of really see what was happening and not be <laughs> left in the dark so to speak and uh and that i think really was comforting for the folks and uh you know they set up a place where people could go if they ended up in a situation where they didn't have power and they couldn't shower and they you know and, and needed to get warm and all of that just kind of of course from my viewpoint went together pretty seamlessly we had a conversation with the governor and uh, we had conversations with all of the leaders of the community and uh, we're able to get that going right away well hopefully those kind of experience is something that we don't have to experience very often yeah. um, well thank you thank you for being with us representative tilton and we look forward to seeing you and talking with you more this spring great great thank you so much um feel free to invite me back anytime i really appreciate your taking the time to talk with me today we will do thank you representative tilton thank you